Okay, so using a Simon Simon Beninga, just to highlight Simon Beninga's textbook here. Um, Simon has a few books. Uh, uh, the most recent one is Financial Modeling. And uh, there's a lot of uh, very good uh, techniques um, for uh, estimating portfolio, also uh, Monte Carlo um, modeling, uh, bond pricing, bond duration, financial statement analysis, a uh, huge amount of material available in Simon's book. And if you're looking for a book um, that makes use of relatively simple concepts in finance and sets them up in spreadsheets, this is a really good book with lots of worked out models, portfolio, Calculating efficient portfolios, calculating the variance, covariance matrix. Okay, so that's the area that I'm looking at. Um, and uh, capital asset pricing model, uh, Black Letterman approach to portfolio optimization, and even in the option side, uh, sophisticated option pricing techniques are introduced. Uh, bond pricing, immunization, modeling term structure. And calculating defaults. So a very interesting book, very replete with a lot of examples, and a strongly value at risk. I strongly encourage people who are interested in finance to take a look at that particular book. Um, I'm going to follow up here with the variance covariance uh, matrix design, and I'm going to put in another worksheet if I can. Um, and in this particular worksheet here, I'm going to look at portfolio portfolio variance okay because we would like to take and um, if we knew the variance covariance matrix from that we could deduce what the portfolio mean return is right well the mean return we have average returns already uh, worked out and um, but we would like to know the return on the a portfolio and we would like to know the variance and standard deviation of a portfolio okay so uh, the starting point would be let's copy the data the variance covariance matrix now in the initial special just values okay in the initial estimation that I'm going to make here and um, I'm going to look at the return right so i'm principally interested in the return and the return is something we've estimated already because we have average levels of return here this is return data so if i copy and we'll say return average return and this was got simply from taking the average of the returns over the 10 year the, the 11 year period Okay, so let's just um, widen this out here, redimension a little bit, gives a little bit more space. And the average returns, we'll just paste special, edit, paste special, and paste values only. Okay, and that's fine. And then uh, keep in mind, we also uh, developed in a very kind of naive way, I suppose, weights, right? based on market capitalization. Now, this is not normally how you would um, optimize a portfolio, right? Um, but the weights of each stock in the portfolio in a very arbitrary way could be assigned in terms of their weights, but not recommended. So this is a, a paste transposed. And I should have, um, so I should have paste Let's come back again, paste, special values, copy, and then paste, special, transpose. So I get values as opposed to um, cells with formulas that don't um, compute. Okay, so let's just uh, round those up a little bit, and I remove these. So th that's just weights. And of course, these are the uh, respective uh, stock prices.
that we started out with our variance covariance matrix now to get the portfolio return the av the overall portfolio return okay um let's just put in mean return and we could do a, uh, a kind of some product here um but uh, or a matrix operation so equal to what I should have here is equal to equal to M mult again a matrix operation the same uh, the same um, uh, notation same note function can be used here and we're multiplying the average returns respectively by the weights engendered okay so we return and we get 21% 2147 and then we want to get the variance of the portfolio and to get the variance of the portfolio right we have to use the let's just take a a guide here in terms of what we're trying to accomplish and the formula can be represented as follows so we, we if we took the weights and multiplied by the variance covariance matrix by the transpose then we get the uh, variance of the portfolio okay so again if we took the way we might view this we have to take the um, transpose of the weights multiplied by the variance covariance matrix which then get in turn multiplied by the weights so it's in effect we can break this down into a couple of steps we do two matrix multiplication operations okay so that's why we repeat mult m mult again and then we open brackets and then we take the transpose trans transpose and what are we transposing we're transposing the, the weights in fact okay so i transpose the uh, weights and I multiply by the variance covariance matrix okay which in turn close bracket which in turn gets multiplied by the uh, just the weights not the transpose any longer so by the weights again and we close and we get 0, 6, 4, 2, which is what we would anticipate and we can change this into percentage okay so the the portfolio variance is 6.43 percent and get the and to get the portfolio standard deviation then standard um, deviation all we need to do is to take the square root and we can take this value and put the power of 0 0.5 anything to the power of 0 0.5 is the is the square root is equivalent so the standard deviation here not surprisingly is bigger than the variance and it's 25 uh, 34 and that's the portfolio standard deviation so if we're to go from the variance covariance matrix right or if, if you like if we're to go from the stock prices and convert to um, portfolio standard deviation portfolio variance and portfolio return and uh, to get the portfolio return we've got to figure out the weights and um, the weights could be based on different systems here we took a very naive system of just taking the weights according to market cap that's not the most sensible way of um, designing your portfolio but if we took the weights here we took just basically each uh, market value was divided by the sum of the six stocks and that produced uh, you know a percentage weight if we were to sum each of those up we would get if we did take each of these weights they should sum to one it does okay and um, when we multiply the weights respectively by the average re by the average return average return that's what we did here so this, these were the average returns 
um, copied and pasted just the values okay when we multiplied the return by the weights it's like doing a sum product we used an m mult operation we got 21.48 percent to get the stand the variance of the portfolio right requires us taking the transpose of the weight so we take the weights we multiply by the variance covariance matrix and that combined that matrix or array then is in turn multiplied again by the weights and that produces the the variance of the portfolio which is 6.43 and then to get the standard deviation of the portfolio okay we just uh, put to the power of a half and when you put uh, any number to the power of a half it's um, the square root okay so the standard deviation is, in fact here is bigger than the variance which is not surprising since we're dealing with percent less than 100 percent in each instance okay 